is this the wrong coating to be using as a protection for the external hull of the Ocean Gate Titan submersible? We're going to be investigating this today, amongst other things. Yeah, I want to show you the timeline of how everybody that was involved was able to get in there and find Titan so soon when they were searching all week long and nobody seemed to know where it was. So as we all know, it all began on June 18th, which is Father's Day Sunday. So on our timeline, 9.45 a.m. Eastern time is the estimated time that the Titan sub imploded. And then eight hours later at around 5.45 is when the Coast Guard was called and also Pelagic Research Services was called. They're the ones that have that Odysseus 6 submersible capable of going down to 6,000 meters. So on Monday, everybody at Pelagic was mobilizing at their East Aurora, New York headquarters where the Odysseus is kept. And so they spent all day here packing and mobilizing the Odysseus 6 ROV. And then of course they transported it to the Buffalo Niagara International Airport where they were being loaded onto these C-17 planes. So at 4 a.m. in the morning on Tuesday, they started to load those three C-17 transport planes. And then the planes departed for St. John's, Newfoundland, and they arrived at about 1 p.m. in the afternoon. The last truck arrived dockside at the Horizon Arctic boat that was supposed to take them out, and it arrived at 11 p.m. at night on Tuesday. Okay. So Wednesday morning, about six hours later at 5.30 a.m., the Horizon Arctic departs for the Titanic wreck site, and it's got 70,000 pounds of equipment on there. And then not even 24 hours later, just an hour short of one day later at 4 30 a.m. the Horizon Arctic arrives at the Titanic wreck site. About an hour after arriving at the site of the Titanic wreckage, they lowered the Odysseus 6 ROV into the exact same spot, the last spot that they knew that the Titan sub was at. And it took them 90 minutes to get to the bottom, to the seafloor. And once they got down there, supposedly within minutes is when they found the first bits of wreckage. And so at 11.48 a.m. Eastern time, the Coast Guard tweeted that the debris field was discovered. Remember, these times up here are local to where the boat was. This time right here is Eastern time. So at 11.48 a.m. is when the Coast Guard tweeted it out, and that's when the world started to hear about it. And then the Coast Guard held the official press conference at 3 p.m. to officially announce it to the world that the Titan submarine had suffered a catastrophic... Yeah, so here's all the days that it took in between here. So now you can see why it takes so long, because you have to mobilize all these people, you have to transport everything out there, and you're so far out in the middle of nowhere. So they essentially worked from Thursday, Friday, Saturday... Sunday, Monday, to bring up as much as they could from the Titan wreckage. And then they started to head back on the 27th. And at 7.30 a.m. on June 28th, they arrived back in St. John's, Newfoundland, where the rest is history. We now have all seen that famous footage and all of the photos of the wreckage of the Titan sub being brought up off the Horizon Arctic boat. Now, I just want to test you folks to see how well you're paying attention. How many of you noticed that this Horizon Arctic boat is the same boat that I just showed you a minute ago in Alex Paramondo's video where he went on the expedition on that boat. That same boat carried the Ocean Gate Titan submarine down to the Titanic expedition probably a few times in the past. And now how poetic and some, somewhat of a tragic irony that the same boat is now brought in to pull up the Ocean Gate Titan submersible from the bottom of the Titanic wreckage site. So now you see why it took them so long. I mean, a day or two to mobilize all of those people and all of that equipment. That entire setup is mobile and they can bring it anywhere in the world, but it just takes a lot of time. The Titanic wreckage site is 435 miles from the coast of Newfoundland. You're out in the middle of nowhere. You can't just call 911. 911, what is your emergency? 911, what is your emergency? You can't call Domino's Pizza. Like nobody's coming for a long time if you get stuck out there. It's like having your car stall out in the middle of the desert. Now, I want you to take a look at this video here where OceanGate CEO Stockton Rush is telling us about this Rhino liner coating that he added on the outside of the carbon fiber hull. Bolted to uh, another titanium piece glued to the carbon fiber. Carbon fiber is coated with Rhino liner, which is sort of what the military uses. It stops uh, water penetration at high pressure into the carbon fiber. Hmm. Rhino liner. Just how thick and effective is that coating? I am not convinced that Rhino Liner is an appropriate material to use here. Okay, so I go to the Rhino Liner website looking for information on maybe spec sheets or something here. 
And here's what they're showing for marine applications. And it's mostly at water and above water. So here they were doing from the ocean up to the bottom of it here. And then slip resistant for the boats. Here you can see protective coatings for the rigid hold inflatable boats here, sprayed it on. And here's a, like a Coast Guard type boat, they sprayed it around the hull. But you can see most of these applications here are at sea level or above. They're not showing anything here that is below sea level, like to any great depth. So I'm very suspicious about this Rhino liner and how he came up with this idea. So based on the lack of any kind of information here, maybe they had more information than we can find, but there's really nothing on their website. I'm gonna give this a thumbs down. I doubt very much that this Rhino liner should have been used at deep depths that the Titan was traveling to. So what could he have used? Oh, come on, we all know what he should have used. He should have been using Flex Seal. Hi, Phil Swift here for Flex Seal Colors and turned it into the Flex Seal Submarine. Red, blue, and green, it's the coolest sub you've ever seen. And the inside is completely dry. Full speed ahead. Hey, what are you looking at? Now, of course, Flex Seal used this little disclaimer here, this warning about using the material. And maybe OceanGate should have listened to similar warnings to them. On the last video that I uploaded for you last week, I showed you some of Alan Poromundo's video. He's a YouTube influencer who was invited on an expedition there in 2021. And he broke his videos up into several parts. And on his other part that I want to show you now, he shows just a complete total systematic failure. And it just shows how unready for prime time these people were during this whole event. So take a look at this. And then I'll put a link to it in the video description below for you. Make sure you check out his entire video on this because it really shows you all of the tense situation that was going on there. So here Stockton and one of his pilots were doing a test dive with the Ocean Gate Titan submersible. And they had taken it down and they were going to be coming back up afterwards and they ran into problems so they couldn't ascend fast enough and it was just going too slow for them it would have taken them until 1 a.m to get back up so what they ended up doing was having to ditch the ballast and maybe other stuff too we're not really sure but here you can see at 8:05 p.m they finally surfaced but there was a problem and the problem was, you know, the sub, you're supposed to hook it back up to the platform here. And those tanks on the platform are supposed to be what pump the air into it to make it float. Now, unfortunately, something cuckoo happened because remember, you have to sink the platform into the water and then you have to put the submersible on top of the platform there. And something just wasn't quite working out right for them. It took them a long time to get it attached. And when they go to inject the air into the platform to make it float back up, the tanks apparently didn't have enough air or something was wrong. And so now they're stuck. And look, it's 3.07 a.m. So it's about seven hours that they've been sitting there inside the sub. They can't get out because they're bolted in because they didn't give them a hatch on this submarine like all the other submersibles have. And then here you can see they, they finally put some kind of bags on them and they finally got it back on track. But look at this, it's 4 a.m. in the morning now. So it was probably about eight or nine hours from the time that they surfaced until the time that they were able to get it back onto the platform and back onto the boat again. Yeah, that must have been just really nerve wracking for them to be stuck in there all that time doing that. In previous videos, we had showed you how they built the hull of the Ocean Gate Titan sub and how it was spun up in a hoop spun method there with the carbon fiber, right? And we showed you what was wrong with it. And a lot of you had pointed out that is not the same hull that was used on the same day that the Titan went down. So that hull that we had originally showed you before was built in a similar method. It was built earlier, 2017, but that hull it failed its initial testing when they did that one third model. So here you can see them doing that one-third model testing. We're testing a one-third scale uh, model of the pressure vessel that will be used on Cyclops 2. The pressure vessel consists of three parts, a cylinder and two hemispheres. One of the unique elements of this test will be the hemispheres. So the hemispheres are also carbon fiber, which has never been done uh, at this uh, size or to this depth. The goal of this test Pressure of 6,000 pounds per square inch. Here, pressure is raised gradually. At the 71 minute mark, the pressure increased to 4,000 pounds per square inch. 
At 72 minutes, the pressure was turned up to 5,000 psi, but three minutes later, at a pressure of 4,285 psi, representing a depth of about 3,000 meters, the test was aborted by apparent water intrusion into one of the carbon fiber domes. Yeah, she's open. That is the most risky part of the test and the most uh, difficult to analyze. Since it's never been done, there's no test data on how carbon fiber in a hemisphere will respond to the pressures. This initial test was deemed a success at 4,000 psi, the equivalent of 2,800 meters. The carbon fiber hemispheres are now back at the manufacturer, Spencer Composites in Sacramento, for analysis ahead of additional testing down the road. And I've always been a little bit leery about the fact, why are they using a one-third size model? Why not use a full-size model? Can they really interpolate everything from a one-third size model up to a full-size model? Think about it when they do crash testing on cars here in the United States, right? Don't they crash the actual car, the actual vehicle that's going to make it out onto the road? Yeah, you know, they don't test a little model and crash it into a wall. So that's the only thing I'm a little concerned about there. The hull was rebuilt in 2020 with new pre-preg carbon fiber. And we think that it was built by Electro Impact. As you can tell by this post that OceanGate did on LinkedIn about six months ago, where they were kind of reminiscing over the fact. But here you can see it being wound. And it's being wound in a very similar manner. The same hoop spun method. They didn't, they didn't move it in a helical pattern with you know diagonal lines going across and then switching direction coming back to make it even stronger. It just looks like they made the same type of winding as they did on the original hull. And so this is all we know about this new hull. Okay, so I just wanted to clear the ear on that and show you that, that this is the latest research we have on this that shows how this hull was built. And so it's very similar to the way it was built the first time around from all of the other videos that you've seen from us. And I have a proposed name change here for the Titan sub. They probably should have just named it the Darwin instead. Now check out this cool video from Wabash National. They did an implosion here and stuck cameras inside the tank to see what it looks like. <laughs> And remember, keep your questions coming because we'll answer as many as we can over the coming days. And thank you so much for joining us, folks, and we'll see all of you on the next one.